All right, everybody, welcome back. This is Dr. McCarthy. Welcome to another microeconomics solution video. Today we are talking about cross price elasticity. We're given this wonderful prompt that talks about how there's a 10% decrease in the price of potato chips. So potato chips has a 10% decrease. 10% percent and since it's a decrease we're gonna label that negative right and that is going to lead to a 30 percent increase plus in the quantity demanded of soda right as these potato chips become cheaper more people are going to buy them as more people buy the potato chips well these potato chips are making me thirsty right they're salty so as a result I'm going to get some extra soda. I'm going to buy more soda. So we're asked, what is the either elasticity of demand or cross price elasticity of demand? And first of all, because we're given information about the price of one thing and how it influences the quantity of another thing, we know just inherently from the answers that are provided here, it's not going to be an elasticity of demand for any of these it's got to be a cross price elasticity but then why is it negative three one of you beautiful wonderful students asked me right why is the cross price elasticity of demand negative three and shouldn't elasticities always be positive aha well elasticities of demand are always positive when it's percentage changes in the quantity demanded over percentage changes in the price of that same good right that's why sometimes you'll see this called the own price elasticity of demand now compare that to the cross price elasticity of demand which is equal to the percentage change in the quantity demanded for some good x over the percentage change in the price for some good Y, right? So it's the elasticity between good X and good Y. And in this case, good X is our soda and good Y is our potato chips. And so in this case here, putting these numbers in, we end up with a plus 30% on the numerator we end up with a minus 10% on the denominator. And when we divide 30 by negative 10, right, the zeros cancel out, the percentages cancel out, this ends up being negative three. And what's the units of it? It's unitless, all elasticities are unitless, so it's just negative three. And let's think about this real quick. Why do we not have an absolute value around the cross price elasticity of demand? Because it gives us more information about what's going on. If my elasticity of demand is negative, right? If it's negative 10, then that tells me that those two goods are complements. Right? That's telling me that decreases in price of one good lead to increases in the quantity demanded of another good. Now compare that to the information that we would get if the elasticity of demand was positive 10. This is telling me that they are substitutes. Right, that as the decrease in the price of one good happens, that's gonna result in a decrease in the quantity demanded of another good. So these always move in the same sign, right? If the price goes down on you know Coke, then the quantity demanded for Pepsi is going to decrease. Why? Because at a lower price, everybody is going to increase their quantity demanded, right? So 
there's an increase in quantity demanded kind of happening here. And the same thing here, increase in quantity demanded. But then since it's a complement, it's going to have that effect compared to a substitute, which will have that effect. And so substitutes will always have a positive cross price elasticity of demand and complements will always have a negative cross price elasticity of demand. I hope that helps. Best of luck. Please uh, send an email or a comment if you have any questions, comments, or concerns.